tech startup has a blockchain model. We all know what that means. Get super rich, super quick. Bitcoins, all the bitcoins. Cryptocurrency over real money forever. <laughs> Hi, now that we've reviewed the first things that probably popped into your head when you read the title of this video, let's discuss what blockchain really is, how it works, and the influence it may have on our future marketplace. <laughs> Before we talk about what blockchain is or how it works, let's talk about the problem that it's trying to solve. Validity and central authorities. The way we tell forged or fake documents, votes, currency, etc. from legitimate ones is by keeping a record of the real entities that could be used to corroborate them. That's why dollar bills have serial numbers, passports have unique IDs, etc. These records are stored with what's called a central authority, like a notary public, etc., who is in charge of checking, whenever they are asked, if a piece of information information matches what is kept in their records. But wait, that means the definition of what is real or what is true for everyone with a dollar or a passport is in the hands of one group of people. What do we call that in the infosec world? A single point of failure. If the central authority were to become corrupt or compromised, all the data they have would likewise be invalidated. There would be no way to corroborate what was real. This is where we start to talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a a system for exchanging money that doesn't involve a central authority. Rather, the records of the transactions and balances of the participants are kept by everyone. Yep, you heard that right everyone. No more secrets, mighty. There are multiple copies of the ledger of transactions hosted on different machines throughout the world. That means to falsify the ledger, you would somehow have to make your changes in every place where the ledger exists, which is functionally highly improbable. Sweet. Is blockchain Bitcoin? Nope. A common misconception, but the two are actually separate. Bitcoin is the currency being exchanged, but blockchain? That's the ledger system itself. Blockchain is the system by which two people are able to exchange Bitcoins and have the ledger update accurately everywhere it is kept. It eliminates central authorities and focuses on many duplicate copies of information to ensure accuracy. That is why blockchain is important to understand outside of Bitcoin because it can apply to any type of record at all, not just money transactions. The goal is decentralization to reduce the effects of corruption, fraud, and other forms of falsification. The thought is that by putting the ledger in as many hands as possible, you also put as many eyes on it as possible. More people watching means harder to hack. And this is how it works. The term blockchain is actually another work from the studio that brought you fireplace, meaning it is very literal. In blockchain lingo, one update to a record is called a block. If you then update that record again, that would be another block. But because it relates to the block before, those blocks get chained together. So you can follow the chain to see the update history. Thus, a block chain. To support a blockchain, you need a peer-to-peer -peer network, aka a system of computers, also called nodes, that have equal privileges and access to the system. With the notable exception of a few governmental regulations, what does this sound like that we know? That's right, the internet itself. Thus, that is what we use. So, Ray, you're just saying all my important information is just getting stored on someone else's computer where they have equal access to it as I do? If you're not, the second ingredient is cryptography. Blockchains use advanced encryption to ensure information exchange is only human readable to those involved with the transaction. There are also what's called consensus algorithms to determine which node is allowed to write an update to the chain. There are many different kinds of these, but an example would be the proof of work algorithm used by Bitcoin. Essentially, a bunch of computers compete to solve a math problem and whoever does it first gets to update the chain. Very Ravenclaw, if you ask me. That is not my house, by the way. Blockchain also has a punishment and reward system that is derived from game theory. Basically, whenever a verified consensus is reached and a new block is added to the chain, they will be rewarded with a coin. Conversely, if you try to falsify the records or manipulate the system, you lose all your coins, as well as any money that you spent on computational power trying to force a consensus. The idea of the system is that because it's decentralized, they want to incentivize cooperation by making it in people's best interest to follow the rules. So is blockchain the future of information and internet transactions? Well, I'm gonna give you a kind of quantum answer. Without widespread market adoption, decentralized ledgers don't hold as much power Power since they haven't reached critical mass. To reach that critical mass, basically, the majority of people have to switch from this centralized system that they've been using for hundreds of years to this new one, which they do not yet fully trust or understand. Even personally, I'm not sure which one I think is more secure and less susceptible to falsification. But it begs the question, Ray, don't we have central authorities because they're central trusted authorities? My school wouldn't even let me use Wikipedia as a source because they said anyone can edit it. Okay, 
putting aside the educational elitism your school is demonstrating with that statement, my response would be this. Trusted by whom? Probably the most powerful form of control that exists in the world is manipulating people's perception of truth. Think of the phrase, History was written by the victors? History was written by a centralized authority with one narrative and one agenda. The only way for us to get an accurate picture of historical events is to do our own research, seek out as many sources as possible, and always be corroborating information. Having a brick in my pocket with constant access to this wealth of knowledge makes it irresponsible of me to not be constantly doing my own research. We all know the damage people do when they share articles just having read the headline and not the full story, not having corroborated the facts they perpetuate. I submit that as a citizen of the modern world, you should be corroborating all the information you receive, whether from a quote unquote trusted central authority or a fellow researcher on Wikipedia. We are all sharing this reality. Distributed ledger systems give us access to literally shared truth. Well, that got way more philosophical than I was expecting. But I hope this information helped clarify how blockchain works. And y'all know by now, but this video was made in partnership with Grizzly Information Security Solutions. Pursuers of truth, if ever I knew some. I want to I want to make like a ball and chain pun. Um And if you came from TikTok or the Discord server, this special hello is for you. I love y'all. Stay safe till next time. I leave my window and pretend you'll come inside Can't fix what isn't broken Can't miss what isn't mine